Hi there, I'm Tracy. Thank you for joining me. This is a DIY upcycling channel where we take pre-owned items and create one-of-a-kind purses, clothing, and accessories. And today I want to make a crossbody boho bag purse. And it will have belts for straps. We will use lots of, well, I have lots of thrifted denim to choose from. You won't really need that much. But uh, I have this really pretty embroidered jeans that have little sequins. That'll be across the top of the bag. Now, I'm trying to keep this simple. I'm not doing lining or a closure, but I do have other bags that I'll link in my description that have lining with pockets and magnetic snap closures and we make a strap. Now keep in mind, a lot of those purses that I made are sort of a tapestry made from blazers from the thrift store with the pretty designs, but they could be denim too. You could do sort of a patchwork. Anyway, so keep an open mind and let's get started. I just made a very simple pattern. It's 13 and a half inches tall and 12 and a half inches across. Now I'm going to take that pattern and these sort of medium wash jeans and make the body of the bag. First thing I'm going to do is just deconstruct these pants so I see what I'm working with. I like to cut the legs off at an angle, saving the pocket on the back. And then when the legs are cut off, I open them up on the side. And I use my pink power electric scissors I have tendonitis issues and this saves my hand. Okay, so now I have two pant legs that look like this. It's almost inevitable to avoid a seam. So what I do is I make that seam intentional and I put it right down the center of my pattern. So I'm going to lay my pattern on and I folded this paper in half so that I can see where the center is. Line it up with the seam. And I'm just going to trace around this. And I will need two of these, one for the front of the bag and one for the back. Now I'm just cutting them out. Okay, so I chose which piece of denim I want to be the front. Mine are pretty identical, it doesn't matter and I added two patches. Now this one is seven and a half by four and a half. This one is four and a half by three. And from the bottom up, I laid this one 1.75 inches and this one is up 4.25 inches. And I laid them right at the edge of the bag and now I'm going to pin them on. Okay. So now I'm going to put some patches on the back piece while I'm doing it. So this patch, and I'm putting patches on there just a little bit lighter than the denim I'm using. This is six and a quarter inches across, five inches tall, and I laid the edge here four and three quarter inches up from the bottom. And now I have this pretty piece of vintage Ecru colored lace. I'm going to lay that at about the corner right there. And I'll pin all this on and I'll trim it when I'm done sewing. I just want to make sure it'll fit nice. And then I have this fabric. I got a bundle from the thrift store that had all kinds of cotton fabric. And I cut out a little piece and I'm going to put that right there. And now I'm just going to pin the rest of this on. Now I'm going to take these to my machine and sew the patches on. I'm going to use gold colored thread because that's the color thread that is in the jeans. And I will use a simple straight stitch, stay close to the edges and sew everything on and I will be using a jeans needle. I often get asked what kind of thread I use 
And I just get mine at Walmart and it's called Coates and Clark All Purpose Thread. Okay, so the bag is done for now and I'm going to set that aside and do a little more work on the front. What I want to do is add a little pocket and I have these Arizona jeans. I like the color and size of this pocket and I'm just seam ripping it off. Now there's my pocket and it's has a folded edge here and I'm going to leave that except at the very top there's a big bulge seam right there and I don't want to deal with sewing through that on my machine so I'm just going to cut just that top little section off okay now I'm going to set this aside for a minute and pull out my tan suede thrifted jacket and I am going to cut off the sleeve and I'm going to cut just on this side of the seam. I may get away with only using one sleeve. If I don't have enough, I'll cut off the other sleeve. Now on this sleeve, there's a seam right here. I'm just going to cut that open. Okay, so see all the seam work in the suede? I don't want any of that. I just want some pure pieces of suede. So I'm going to cut around those. Okay, so at the top of this pocket, I want to do some whip stitching with suede. So I don't have long pieces of suede, so I need to create my own. And I will just take one of these smaller pieces that I cut off the sleeve, round the edges. Now I'm just going to cut a spiral out of this I would say a little larger than eighth of an inch, but a little smaller than quarter of an inch. And I will just keep cutting around and around until I have one long piece. Okay, so I'm going to need to punch some holes with a hole punch. And I am just marking where I want mine and I'm coming in about quarter of an inch from the side about uh, almost three quarters of an inch down from the top. I'm avoiding this seam, this hem on the back. So about a quarter of an inch and about every three quarters of an inch I'm going to make a black dot now I don't typically mark this. I'm kind of doing this so you can see where I'm putting them. Now I have this, hole. let me bring the camera up a little bit. Okay, so I do have a hole punch and I have it set, this is the smallest one, or this is the smallest one. I have it set on the second smallest. And I will punch holes where I made those black dots. But if you don't have a hole punch, I've just used a needle too, and this will be threaded with my suede. And I've pushed that, as long as your needle is sharp enough, I've pushed that through, but sometimes the suede gets stuck, and I just have a pliers usually handy, I've done it both ways, and pull that through, because it'll get tight right there. But I'm going to make life easy and make some holes. And I just squeeze it till it kind of clicks. Now that spirally suede that we cut, 
I am just going to thread my needle and I'm sorry I don't know what size needle I have I never do because they are just sort of things I pick up secondhand pre-owned typically without packaging so I'm just going to thread it through with kind of a tail hanging about five six inches long okay so including my tail my suede piece is about 35 inches long that'll probably be way more than what I need but I err on the side of too much rather than too little now about three and a half four inches down from the very end I'm going to tie a double knot I just looped it twice and don't pull these too hard because they will break but just sort of snug now I'm ready to begin my stitches okay now so my first hole I am just going to put my needle through pull that suede all the way to the knot and then I am going to come around and go into the next hole now our suede from cutting it in a circle is a little curly cue you have to straighten that out a little bit and then come to the next hole reminds me of those little cards when I was like in preschool we had these little cards with shoestrings and they had pre-punched holes. They were so fun. They were like my favorite thing to do in preschool. Okay, so I just will keep doing that till I get to the end. And sometimes I don't care if they're a little twisted like that. Okay, I'll do that till I get to the end and then I'll show you how I finish it off. Okay, so I came through my last hole right there and now I have this piece hanging I'm just going to snip that oh maybe six seven inches and now I'm going to go to my machine and just a real simple straight stitch I am going to stitch that right along here so that everything stays nice and secure now I have a little bubbled one I'm going to have to play with that pull it through to make sure everything's nice and secure on there okay now I'm just going to go make that stitch and I'll be back okay now I have this longer piece of suede from the arm I am going to cut it straight across right here and I want an approximate 10 inch tall section so here's my 10 inch mark. I'm just going to cut that straight across and this is what I have. What I'm doing with that piece of suede is I want suede fringe to come down the sides of the pocket and I want it to come down the sides of the bag. So I'm just cutting fringe for that. Now here's my 10 inch piece and I have a cutting mat, a straight edge, and a rotary cutter. Now this is an entire set um, that I got on Amazon. I'll put the link in my description if you're interested. And I'm just going to cut strips that are approximately a quarter of an inch. And that first piece I always just chuck because it's crooked. <laughs> and so I will make fringe. This may or may not be enough. If not, I have that other sleeve that I can cut as well. Just a quick note, you can cut this by hand too, and that's probably why I have tendonitis because I made hundreds of purses over the years and I cut for about the first two years, I cut this by hand. This is so much easier. Here's my pocket. Here's my little pile of fringe. Now I'm going to turn my pocket over and take this to my machine. I don't need a pin fringe or anything like that. And I will start sewing about an inch down from the top. I already have a piece there. And I will put the, if you have a right or wrong side, I do not. You want to put the right side facing down. 
And so my machine, I'm using a straight stitch. My needle, let's say, is here. I already back stitched. I will just lay a piece of fringe, overlap about half an inch. So take another piece, overlap about half an inch. So and do that till I'm all the way down to this point. I am not going to do this section right here, just coming down the side. Okay, that's what my pocket looks like on the back. My fringe is close, but it's not touching. You can have as much or as little as you like. Now, I am going to sew it on to the bag. If you want to do some sort of embellishment, this would be the time to do it on your pocket before you sew it to the bag. You know, a fun little earring or brooch. I've done all kinds of things on pockets. But this one, for me, the focal point is going to be those flowers so I don't want to distract I have a lot of detail already going on with the pocket okay so I'm just centering it this way and it's easy because I have a seam and a point and then I marked down I have a little pocket five and a half inches from the top and I made a mark on each side because it is important to mark that because these can really get shifted around when you sew and nothing looks worse than like a weird cockeyed pocket. My pins are over it. My sewing machine, I'll go grab them and get this pinned on. Now I'm just going to take it to my machine and with a straight stitch, go around, not the top of course, but just go around the edge there's already a stitch there. I'm going to try to stay on that little stitch and I will go around it twice where this knot is. I just scooch it over a little bit and get that sewn on. There's what the pocket's looking like. And now it's time to do the fringe on the sides. I did have to go to that other jacket sleeve and cut another 10 inch tall piece and cut more fringe. Okay, so I divided my fringe into two equal piles. And then I took a ruler and up from the bottom, I measured four and a quarter inches and I made a mark and I did the same on this side. Now this fringe gets sewn on differently than the pocket fringe. I am going to start one inch down from the bottom. Now this fringe has to be laid inside the bag and not outside like we did the pocket. And this will all be done at my machine. I will take my fringe, this with me. I'll start the first piece of fringe one inch down I will stitch, back stitch, go over it. Now the next piece of fringe will be maybe a quarter inch space away from that. Sew over it. Now I'm trying to stay close to the edge, as close to the edge as I can. And I will continue sewing that all the way down to this line. Now we're going to do a bit of a gusset where this gets sewn in like this. So we don't want to go past that line. So I'll just go to my machine and get everything sewn on. Now you would think right or wrong, wrong side putting it down matters, but when it's standing up, you see both sides. So it really doesn't matter. I would say put right side yeah, I had to think about that. <laughs> so I would say put right side down. But like I said, I've learned it doesn't really matter. It all gets kind of entangled when it's flowing in the with the movement and everything. Okay, so I'm going to go get this side done. And I'll come over here and do the same on this side. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, that's what it's looking like so far. Now it's time to sew the front and the back together. Okay, here's my front, here's my back. The first thing I need to do is make sure all these fringes are out of the way. We will be sewing three sides and we need all the fringe to get out of the way. You can move it up because we won't be sewing across there. Now I'm going to take the back side, bring it on top of the front, right sides together, and I'm going to pin all three sides. And I always start off by pinning the corners first. That just makes sure everything is lined up. Now that everything's pinned, I'm just going to go to my sewing machine and with a straight stitch, sew all three sides. And when I get that done, I'll go back and do it again just to make it extra durable. Okay, I'm just going to leave this inside out for now and work on the strap. Okay. So I have two belts here and the buckles fit into one another. When I go pick out belts at like the thrift store, you know, I play with it and see if the buckles are going to fit inside one another. I like it to be buckled down so it doesn't matter what belt goes into what. Um, most importantly though, Something that I didn't learn my lesson for like a year is don't get thick belts. Now, even as beautiful as they may be, because it will break your needle, it will drive you nuts and end up not being durable. A thin leather is fine, but not a thick leather. And I really like sort of weaved belts. This is sort of faux leather and fabric very easy to sew and some man-made materials like UPC and things like that can be pretty easy to sew. All right, I'll show you how I put them together. Okay, so I buckled my belt right here and then I threw a tape measure over top of my mannequin. Now you can experiment on your own body, hold the bag and hold the belts and see where you might want it but I am a pretty true 47 inch length for a crossbody, which is fairly small for a lot of people, a short crossbody, but I don't like to reach way down. I like it right here. So my tape measure, I put one end here and I can't go much lower on my belt because I've got this buckle. So I'm going to take a marker and I am just going to mark right there where the end of my tape measure is. Now this comes up and around. Here's the 47. And I am going to go down about half an inch to give myself seam allowance and make a mark. And I am not cutting anything yet. I won't cut it until after it's sewn because this is sort of weaved and braided. It will come unraveled. So, now it's time to sew it onto the back. Okay, now this is where you're just going to have to kind of play with your belt and bag. I turned my bag right side out because I am left-handed, so I'll wear my crossbody this way, which is opposite as a lot of people do. And I want my buckle in front. So these are things I'm sort of evaluating before I sew the strap. And this will be the front, so my little pocket. So I just kind of lay it there and take note of what strap goes on which side. So this strap I want on this side and I already marked it. Okay, so I didn't forget. I stuck a little pin there and a little pin in the belt. So I remember which side I want to go where. Now I'm going to turn my bag inside out again. Okay, 
Belts can kind of be tricky. There's not an exact science. You kind of just have to play with them and see what works. Now, here's the side where I marked with the pin. And here's my side seam. Now, I'm going to flatten that out a little bit so I can see that side seam. Now, here is the area of the belt where I pin. So I know this side goes here. And here is the right side because I can see the belt buckle. So I know this is the right side. Now, for the strap, the wrong side goes down. I am lining that pin up at the top of my bag because I will sew across there. But I want the wrong side down. I want to be able to see the right side when I lay it. And I won't pin the, let's see if I can pin it. Typically you can't pin a belt, so I don't try. No, this is a little black mark I made earlier when it was on my mannequin. So I know that that black mark needs to line up with the top of the bag, center it over that seam. And now I am just going to go to my machine and I am going to stitch over that five, six, seven times. It all depends on, you know, what size stitch you're using and everything. I always go at least five. You want that to be super durable. So now I'll go sew that on. Go nice and slow. Uh -huh. Very important. And sometimes you have to use a hang, hand crank if your belt is too thick. Okay, now I have this end all sewn and it's okay now to cut that off. Okay, so here's the side I just sewed. Now this is the wrong side right here. I'm just making sure it's straight all the way over. And then when I get to this side, I'm going to find that side seam and that black mark that I made, because I know I need to line that up with the top of my bag and center it on that side seam just like that and now I will go to my machine and stitch across that just like I did the other one I'm giving myself staying about a quarter inch down from the top of the bag when I sew okay. now that I have this sewn it's okay to cut the rest of the belt off that I don't need. Okay, so now I want to make that pretty fold over with the embroidered jeans. Okay, so I made another simple pattern. It's 12 and a half inches this way, the width of our original pattern and four inches tall. Okay, so now all I have to do is decide what part of this embroidery I want for my bag and I'll lay this on top of it and trace it. Okay, so here's my pattern. Now I am going to cut this out, but not on that line. I am going carefully about an inch all the way around because mine has beads in sequence. I have to do mine a little differently. If yours is just pure embroidery or some sort of design, you can just cut it out as is, but I need to take an extra step and I'm going to have little beads flying everywhere. Okay, I'm only focusing I will need to trace this pattern twice, but I am not doing the sequins and beads on the back side. You're welcome to if you have like an embroidery, but this will snag if I'm wearing a sweater. I mean, it'll just snag if it's on the underside. So I'm just focusing on this piece. And what I'm going to do is with a 
straight stitch, I am going to go around my line here. That will just secure all these little, and I'll go very slow, that's why I'm doing it on the top. I want to watch, I can't sew over like a big chunky rhinestone like that, but I can sew over little beads like this, as long as I go slow and make sure I'm not hitting them. But I will follow that black line all the way around with a straight stitch. Now this will be, I'm calling it my bottom edge. I am going to go slightly inside of this black line and I'm going to switch to a zigzag stitch. That way I can just cut it off and be done. I'm not going to hem the bottom. That zigzag stitch will be my finish. And I will have to go super slow over these beads. Okay, here's my zigzag down at the bottom. The rest is a straight stitch. Now I am going to cut this out, staying close to the stitch that I made, but slightly outside of it. And again, I will have beads going everywhere and I'm using my not good sewing scissors because I will probably catch some beads here. Okay, so I need to cut out another one. This time it's just going to be denim because I don't want beads on the back side of my purse. So I just lay this down on the same jeans that I cut this out of, trace around it, cut it out. Okay, now that I have this one cut out, down at the bottom, I'm going to use my largest zigzag stitch and just run it close to the bottom. That's all I'm going to do to finish it. You can serge yours, hem it, whatever you want to do, but I don't care if there's a little bit of a, a frayed edge at the bottom. Now that I have that zigzag done, I'm going to put these right sides together and I'm making sure the zigzag is at the bottom on both right sides together. And I'm just going to do a straight stitch with quarter inch seam allowance down the sides. Now I'm just pressing that seam that I made. Okay, so now I want to slip this piece over top of the top of my bag. I want it inside out because I want the right side down on the wrong side of the bag. The bag is still inside out. So with the zigzag stitch at the bottom, I'll slide it on this way. Now I can see the stitching. The pocket is here. That's my front. And this is my front, that pretty beadwork. So I have that right. Now I just need to slide this over top of the belts and everything. And I want to line up the very top. Now I have a seam right here and a seam right here. I'm just kind of lining those up and my pins. And I'm not going to try to pin over that belt, so I'll just go right next to it, stick a pin, do the same on this side. And now I'll come to the opposite side I want everything lined up here, but I'm lining those seams up. Once you get that done, then everything's pretty easy to pin and lines right up. Now I am just going to continue lining up this edge and pinning completely around. Okay, now I'm just going to sew this on. I'm just going to remove that front plate of my sewing machine, slide this in over the arm, and do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Okay, so now I want to give the bag, the bottom of the bag dimension by stitching right here at the corners. But what I need to do first is reach inside 
and make sure all the fringe is moved up and out of the way so that I'm not cutting and stitching any of the beautiful fringe. Okay. Okay, so I did one side. This is the look we're going after. What I want to do, or what you want to do, is, okay, so here's my bag. Here's the corner. I'm going to pull that open at the corner, and my goal here is to line up this seam and this seam. You just kind of feel it till you get kind of a flattish triangle shape. Make sure my seams are lined up. Now, this is pretty easy. <laughs> so I'm going to take my ruler and from this point down here where the fabric meets the stitching, I am going to measure up from this point two and a half inches and make a mark. Now I'm going to come and do that on the other side, two and a half inches, make a mark. Now I'm just going to connect those dots and make a straight line. Now I am going to stick a few pins in it and all I do is take it to my machine and sew across that line. I will use a straight stitch, zip right across it once, and then do it twice for extra durability. These are the corners I just sewed. Now I can cut them off. I'm just going to stay close to my stitch line. Now we can turn our right side out and see what we have. I have one more step to go. I want to do some decorative stitching on that fold over. Now here's what it looks like. That piece we just cut off and sew gives the bag some dimension. I'm just making sure I push that out nice. And now there's the back. There's the front. Now I'm going to fold over this flap. How cute is that? Now I'm going to go to my ironing board and I'm going to do a little pressing. I'm going to press the top right along here so it's nice and crisp. And then I will press the little seams down here. Now that I have that all pressed, I like to take it, lay it out flat, lay a tea towel over top, and I'm just going to press the top again where the belts are, just so everything lays nice and smooth. Now I'm going to whip stitch around the edge like I did here, except this time I'm not going to use the hole punch because I don't want the beads, the thread to be destroyed. So I'm just making another long spiral suede thread basically. Okay, I'm going to tie that same knot down at the bottom. and then thread my needle. Now this time I'm going to keep my pliers handy because I may need that to pull the needle through since I'm not poking holes. Okay, just a little bit of a tail. And I am not going to mark mine, but I am going to go about three quarters of the way up on the flap and about three quarters of an inch spaced apart. Now I am just going to go in from the top. Let's see how well. Okay, this doesn't want to go through and I am going to poke holes. I am just going to make sure 
I avoid beads. I'll do the best I can. And I will just poke holes three quarters of the way up, about three quarters of an inch apart, unless there's a bead in my way, then I'll scooch it one way or the other. I'm going all the way around the back as well. Okay, now I'm going to try that again. I'm going in through the front so that you can see that knot that I made at the bottom of the suede. Now I am just going to try to find my holes and just keep whip stitching it all the way around. Okay, here it is all done. An adjustable strap, a little pocket. I put some of my goodies in there from my own purse. Great movement in the fringe. Let's see, I'll show you what it looks like inside. I'll give you a closer up, a slower closer up here in a minute. So I'll show you inside. Just denim, very nice. There's what the back looks like. Fun belt strap. All right, I will give you a closer look and thank you so, so much for watching.